Hi, I'm Aaron Woland, and I'm here to demo for you the Cisco Security Connector and the services that it uses. Um, the Cisco Security Connector was jointly developed by Cisco and Apple to provide the next generation of security to mobile devices, specifically iOS devices. Um, and it, it is for supervised iOS devices only. So for those of you who want to start demoing this yourself, in order to switch into supervised mode, you do need to wipe your own iPad. So keep that in mind. Um, but uh, what I want to show you is the uses of the Cisco Security Connector. So <clears throat> when you actually launch the Cisco Security Connector on the iPad itself, it's actually a service that's going to be running in the background, a daemon. It's going to be running no matter what. Um, the end user can't really do anything about it. The end user can click on the Cisco Security Connector app and they can see this nice, beautiful UI that was co-developed by Apple. And you can see that, you know, uh, you can click learn more and you can go to the web page about Cisco Security Connector. You can click on status at the bottom and you can see that it is protected by umbrella and by clarity. Clarity is the name of the visibility engine that we've put in to be able to um, analyze and well capture and then analyze the all URLs coming out of every app on the iOS platform. So the way that Apple designed where Clarity sits in, we actually shim in between the apps and the network stack within the operating system itself. So we see everything. And I'll, uh, I'll go through that again a little bit more soon. But all they can really see inside of this app is that it's enabled, it's registered, it's provisioned, and it's connected. They can see some details that don't mean a whole lot to uh, anyone other than maybe the administrator. And pretty much the same thing with Umbrella. When you're connected with Umbrella, right, you see that it is protected on IPv4. It says unprotected on V6 because I do not have a V6 address on the network that I'm on right now, right? But you can see that it's connected, it succeeded, it was able to talk to um, the Umbrella Cloud, and so we have roaming DNS level uh, protection here. So if they click this I in the bottom right corner, um, they get to see that, it, hey, they know the version of the connector that they're on, but they can also report a problem which will automatically generate an email to the defined administrator of the environment with all of the details known, uh, including debug files and so on, so that you know, they can receive help from TAC or whomever may need it, uh, that information. But hopefully they never need that and it's only there for posterity's sake. Um, the things I wanna point out with the, the connector and how it works, um, all right, we're tracking every app, whether it's in a container, whether it's not, we're able to see all of the URLs, all of the sockets, you know, all the network connectivity that's occurring uh, with any app. So to, to show that, like here's a Tor browser, all right? So this is the, the Red Onion Tor browser. <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and let it make a connection out. So everything should be in a, inside of a secure tunnel and anonymized uh, in theory, all right? But if I'm going to any of these locations, like here I am going to Apple, browsing iPhone uh, X, um, and it is a, a little bit slow from where I'm at going through the whole Tor network, but we'll, we'll get there. Um, no matter where I'm going to in here, everything I'm doing within Tor is going to be, like here's Sports Illustrated, you know, everything I'm doing, we're gonna be able to see all these different URLs that I've connected to. So, going out, I'm going to look at a little bit about the iPhone X. Okay. Um, we'll get back to that. Even these very interesting apps, like, you know, this is this is one called Hi By Music. And this is a very interesting app to me. We, we The team and I were, like, looking for interesting apps that we could use to kind of prove what apps are good or not good. Uh, and this is one that kind of came up. And one of the neat things about this is its ability to import music across the Wi-Fi. So one of the things it's doing is, if I go to that IP address, right? So if I switch back to the, the iPad, you'll see 
4399 that's where I'm at. Look at that, I can upload things here. There's a folder called Stolen Documents, and in here is my super secret, confidential, highly secretive business plan. I mean, so the interesting thing about this app is it's actually turning my iPad into a bit of a web server um, that is allowed to upload files. So I can upload files into this, right? You know, uh, I could pick anything really. Let's, you know, it doesn't really matter. I could send it my, uh, there's a PDF of one of my trips I've recently taken, right? So it, it, now that file is on my iPad and can be used for transfer. So really interesting app. This is not the interesting part about it, and I'll show you the most interesting part in a, in a minute. So how this plays out on the Clarity side, Clarity is what we're calling this. iOS Clarity is what we call it in the, in the dashboard for the AMP for Endpoints console. So um, what we've got now is a console that is traditionally reserved for the security operator or the incident responder. And now what they've got is this real basic overview of every app that is being seen out of the managed devices that are in this environment um, or that are, are, are controlled within your AMP cloud, right? So I've seen this dark browser tour and I2P, right? I mean, somebody's been, you know, installed dark, you know, dark browser, I'm like, these are not apps I should be seeing in my corporate-owned devices because that's what these are. These supervised devices are corporate-owned devices. They should be controlled by the corporation, and what you do on them will be um, viewed by the corporation. And I'm seeing things like Cisco Spark. Of course, that belongs. But some of these other apps just really don't belong. And here's that Hi by Music, and here's that Red Onion uh, Tor browser. Right? And this was sorted from most observed to least observed. We could switch that around and sort it from least observed and see it right here. Let's go take a look at what the Red Onion Tor powered web browser has been doing. I click on app trajectory and that pivots me into the trajectory of any connections from this app. It gives me a list of all the devices that are using that app that are connected to my uh, console, right? So I've got this iPad mini four. I see traffic today from the iPad mini four. And I, I you know, just really quickly get a brief overview here on the right, or I can even filter on it down here at the bottom, right? So at the bottom, you'll notice that I am getting, um, DNS requests. I'm getting straight up IP address requests, right? I'm able to see, um, all the different connections that have been made from this app, where they're going in a filterable and sortable uh, style. So I can sort it based on most number of hits at the top or least number of hits at the top. I can sort it based on alpha, you know, alphabetically. Uh, I can expand and contract everything and I can see everything I've been doing within that Tor browser. So you can see I went to Sports Illustrated, even though this is to going to an HTTPS site, I'm still able to see the full URL because of the way that Clarity gets shimmed in between the app and the network stack itself. So I'm gonna pivot again, I'm gonna go through the device trajectory by clicking on that iPad that I'm demoing with, right? So I click on that iPad and I get a timeline of, of every connection the iPad has been making. So, you know, I can, I can click down and get some details. I know it's running OS uh, iOS 11.2, which is uh, currently in beta. Um, I can see that, you know, the connector version it's running. I can see the IP addresses that have been used by this um, iPad internally and externally. Um, some other, you know, I can move it into a different group. Like maybe I want to manually move it into a group for further investigation. And I can see that there's been two-way communications and one-way communications happening with this Red Onion Tour browser, but also this Hi By Music. It's all just been a bunch of random connections outbound. And when you click on these, you can see where it's going to. So in this case, this was me talking uh, to it locally on my, my local network. Um, and I'm able to see the different bits of traffic that are in there. You can see media user. Now I can also slide the time scale back, right? And as I, t as I slide the time roll back, I can see other applications that have been used, right? And what kind of connections they've been making. 
But I really want to drill into this Hi by Music app, so I'm going to pivot again. So I started off in that Tor app, went to the iPad, saw a very interesting app here in the iPad. So then I click on Mobile App Trajectory to pivot into Mobile Trajectory again, right, for the application itself. Right? I want to see what has this Hi by Music been doing. So here's the connections that have been made while I was here, right? while I was demoing it to you in this video. I can see that I made two connections out to this IP address in index.h.php. I can see a lot of other connections to qq.com. Um, I can see it, some things like that. I want to figure out what on earth that 121 is though. So what I did is I copy here. I'm going to just go right to it and see what this IP address is and what it's doing. What I found really interesting is um, I, I don't read that. To me, that looks like Klingon, maybe. Um, definitely not English, but this is where it's been connecting roughly every two minutes. Um, going up here and sending some kind of call home to this IP address on this server. So I'm going to take that IP address and I'm going to investigate it in Umbrella Investigate here. I'm just going to just go straight up with the IP address itself, okay, and click investigate. And as I go through this, I realize that, okay, that autonomous system number, I may want to take another look at that, right? But I see that it's in this Shenzhou, somewhere in China, maybe, right? It just doesn't look quite right. Something's something's off by this. Now, it, it, it known domains there are high by love and hi by dot love right um so it, it's not really known malicious but there there's a little bit something just not right about it so i'm taking a look more at that autonomous system number and i, I realize that i'm in Hangzhou, china other you know china areas and that it's associated to a lot of other activity now and ultimately what this really is is just a cloud service hosted by alibaba Right? And there's a web server thrown up in the cloud um, that's collecting information from these applications that they produce. Right, So this, this application where I've just put some stolen documents called Super Secret Confidential Highly Secretive Business Plan is now being perused somewhere in China by somebody who's pretty happy to see this. Um, little do they know when they open it up, it's literally like nothing but a brochure for our um, application. So that's the clarity piece of things, right? Giving us total visibility into everything that an app is doing, whether it's encrypted, whether it's unencrypted. It happens before certificate pinning occurs, so that doesn't get in the way. I'm not having to decrypt anything. Um, it's just pure straight up visibility in, in this 1.0 release. The control aspects come in over here with Umbrella, and with Umbrella, one of my favorite things to see in Umbrella is this activity search because I just frankly love this because this activity search is kind of like um, shopping in Amazon. I just pick and choose whatever it is that I want uh, to view over here. Like let's say I want to see anything that's been proxied and I click apply. <clears throat> now what's fun about proxying, and I'll show you this, um, so if I were to take a look at the stack that I'm using here inside of, of my, my iOS device, right? I can go up into my Wi-Fi, I can see the Wi-Fi network that I'm connected to, and I can come down here to proxy and I can see that's off. Okay, so it's not using that. It's, it's not using a global proxy, right? It, Umbrella is literally using DNS, right? It's using what Apple likes to call DNS proxy. And as we get oops, as we get down here to profiles and device management, you can see right here where it says DNS proxy. That's what Apple likes to call it. This web content filter, that's actually clarity. That's actually where we are um, shimming in between the apps and the uh, network stack itself. Whereas DNS proxy is where we're doing our proxying and our content filtering. So we're, we're able to then insert ourselves into the DNS stack and take any DNS requests that are not destined for your internal DNS server. And we can take all of those DNS requests and we can send them in an encrypted DNS crypt form out to our um, open DNS servers, or, you know, the umbrella servers, right? And we can 
um, then reply with the correct IP address if it's allowed, the uh, block website if it's denied, right? And let's show you that. So if I were to open up a web browser, it doesn't matter what browser um, I want to open. I can open, let's say, Dolphin right here. And let's try to go somewhere that should be blocked by our policy, right? I could try to go to, there you go, exploitdb.com, right? And I get redirected through DNS over to the umbrella server that says this website has been blocked due to a security threat. And I can even, you know, click down on diagnostics info and find out a little bit more as to what was blocked, why it was blocked, when it was blocked. Not really useful to the average user, but maybe useful to the technical person. So when we proxy something with Umbrella, it's not all traffic coming through our proxy. We do it based on our DNS response. So if something is not known good, so we just let you go there if it's known good. If something is known bad, we're going to block it. We're going to send you to a block page. If something is in that gray area where we don't know enough about it to block it or necessarily let you get there directly, then we're going to reply with our IP address to bring you through what we call our intelligent proxy. So only the things that need to be inspected further come through this proxy. All other restrictions and content filtering policies are applied all through a DNS control plane instead of having to play, you know, endpoint gymnastics and, and setting up things like global proxies or configuring VPNs so that it has to come back through our cloud service or any of that stuff. Just all out in the open over just straight up DNS control plane. It's really clean. It's really slick. So the things you see that have gotten proxied, these are all things that were gray area enough to require them to come through the proxy. And when they do, I can decrypt them with uh, HTTPS decryption. Um, then I can examine them, send files off to the AMP cloud to be inspected, run them through antivirus, right? That's when I get to have that level of control. The things that are known good and I'm going to be allowed out to those at all times, they don't need to take up bandwidth coming to the cloud. They don't need to be redirected in that route and have that level of inspection so we don't have to be in the middle there. Um, so when, and when the policies, I mean, you get your traditional, this is, is not an umbrella session, so we're not going to go through every policy, but it, you do get the traditional content filters of being able to filter based on the different categories. So we're blocking web spam, web bots, pornography, nudity, things like that. Now, the, the thing to keep in mind from a security perspective, what we're blocking is, is we're blocking phishing and, and other websites like that where someone's trying to get you to click on this link because you just spent all this money on PayPal and on PayPal um, you know, has just sent $100 to Apple or whatever it's saying that it did just to get you to click the link and give your credentials to the malicious actor. And we're able to you know, prevent you from going to those bad websites, even when you're off network, off premises, you know, whether you're, you're on LTE or whether you're on Wi-Fi, right? That's the level of protection that you get with the performance benefits of controlling this through the DNS control plane, as well as the administrative benefits of doing it that way instead of having to deal with um, pack files or auto discoveries or... Uh, global proxy settings and so forth. So I hope the demo was useful. Um, people have asked me to record it. I normally do this live. So there it is. Uh, thank you very much for your time.